And now I began, my, all my studies, my, my book Sexual Personae began as a dissertation at Yale, uh, graduate school, on androgyny. I've always been fascinated, attracted to, you know, to the subject of androgyny, uh, and, and that's what the, Sexual Personae is. I explored it in history. But the, the more I explored it, I realized that, um, that historically, this, uh, this, uh, the movement toward androgyny occurs in late phases of culture, okay, as a, as a, a civilization is starting to uh, unravel, okay, and that, that you can find it again and again and again through history in the, in, in the, in the Greek art, okay, you can, you can see it happening. All of a sudden, okay, there's a, there's a kind of, uh, you know, the, the, the sculptures of, of, um, of handsome nude young men athletes that used to be very robust, okay, in the archaic period suddenly begin to seem like wet noodles, okay, you know, toward the end, okay, and, the, uh, and, that, and that the people who, who, who live in such periods, a late phase of culture, whether it's, it's the Hellenistic era, whether it's the Roman Empire, whether it's, it's uh, the Mauve decade of Oscar Wilde in the 1890s, whether it's Weimar Germany, people who live in such times, okay, feel that um, they're very sophisticated, they're very cosmopolitan, okay, and homosexuality, heterosexuality, so what, anything goes, and so on, all right, and so, and but, but we, from the perspective of, of historical distance, okay, you can see that it's a culture that no longer believes in itself, okay, and then, and, and then what you, all, what you in, invariably get are, are, you know, are, are, are people who are convinced of the power of heroic masculinity, okay, on the edges, whether they're the Vandals and the Huns, okay, or whether, or whether they're the barbarians of ISIS, okay, you see them, you know, starting to mass on the outsides of the culture, and that's what we have right now. That there is a tremendous uh, and, and, and rather terrifying disconnect between the infatuation with the transgender movement on, in, in our own culture and what's going on out there. Okay, All right? and, so, and so I mean that's why I'm concerned. I feel it's ominous. Okay, I I, I question whether uh, the transgender uh, choice is um, in, indeed genuine in every every single case. Uh, but what, again, what concerns me is when uh, well-meaning uh, adults, you know, believe that they are helping people uh, by by making it easier uh, some permanent change in the body from which there is no going back. Um, you know, for example, Brown University, one of the elite uh, you know, Ivy League schools in the United States, put uh, sex reassignment surgery on its in, uh, on its uh, student insurance program. Okay, so you, so that so that it becomes you know, they can get a, a sex change in college. I think I, I I thought, oh my lord. Okay, I I feel that's evil. Okay, because what it does to young, to young people today facing an uncertain job market. Okay, what it says people who are questioning their gender while they're at Brown University um, suddenly feel well, it's like economically you know a better judgment, you know, for me to move now on this rather than to wait till I don't have a job and living in my parents' basement, okay, and so on. So actually, the, you know, the, the adult community trying to be understanding, okay, is I think involved in, 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 in possibly making a permanent change in someone's life that, that could have tragic consequences.